The COVID-19 pandemic isn't slowing down, and there is only one hope to end it, a vaccine. But news of Russia granting regulatory approval to a COVID-19 vaccine has been received with skepticism. I hope that the Russians have actually definitively proven that the vaccine is safe and effective. I seriously doubt that they've done that. And what about the other scientists across the world? What's their research showing? And when will they be ready? Welcome to your COVID-19 special here on DW News. I'm Monica Johnson Berlin, as always, good to have you with us. Now, normally it takes years to develop a new vaccine, but in times of this pandemic, it can't go fast enough, not only in Russia. Here's a quick look at where we're at. A little pinprick, but it brings high hopes with it. Inside the syringe, a vaccine from the CureVac company. It's designed to imitate the coronavirus in the body to provoke an immune response. About 200 people have volunteered to take part in the trial. This way I can do my bit to help defeat the virus. Ten companies in Germany are currently working to defeat the virus by developing vaccines. Two are already testing their vaccines on humans. Trials generally consist of three clinical phases. Phase one is mainly focused on whether the human body can tolerate the vaccine and the reaction of the immune system. Phase two looks at how high the dosage has to be. And phase three tests effectiveness, whether the vaccine offers protection in everyday life. Normally, approval takes about eight to ten years, but now the process is supposed to go much faster. Here at the University of Tübingen Hospital, phase one is nearing its end. From the data so far, we can see that the vaccine is well tolerated and safe. And we also hope that the first signals of the immune defense, which are becoming apparent, are also positive. Another German company is already testing its vaccine on humans. BioNTech, based in the German city of Mainz, is partnering with the U.S. pharmaceutical company Pfizer. They're already combining phases two and three, testing whether the vaccine actually protects against coronaviruses in everyday life. BioNTech has around 30,000 volunteer test subjects worldwide. It hopes to have an approved vaccine before the end of the year. The head of Germany's medical regulatory body thinks Germany is on the right track. German vaccine developers are well advanced. They're in a global premier league. These are modern platform technologies for vaccines. I expect that even two vaccines could possibly come from Germany. If there are more, so much the better. A vaccine for everyone by early next year. That's an ambitious goal that will require a lot more pinpricks. While other countries are even more ambitious, in India, even the government is pushing hard for quick results. The threat of another serious lockdown has people worried. But Indian researchers are hard at work trying to find an answer in the form of a vaccine. Once a vaccine is here, things should improve. It's, uh, this, uh, it, should, it would also give us consolation on many fronts. It's, it's, a, it's a reassuring thing. Things would be better. At least uh, you won't be that scared walking out in public and maybe uh, you won't have to wear the mask all the time. In July, two Indian vaccine candidates initiated phase one human trials. Doses will be administered to volunteers spread over a dozen sites. The Indian government says it feels it has a moral imperative to develop the vaccine. And many major Indian pharmaceutical brands are eager to oblige. 60% of the vaccine supplied in the world whether it be Africa or Europe or uh, Southeast Asia or anywhere, are of Indian origin. So India is perceived and is an important player in the vaccines for supply for the world. This pressure, however, took a political turn. India's top medical research body, in a letter to trial sites, said that the trials should be expedited to have the vaccine ready to launch by mid-August. This raised serious concerns on whether these extraordinarily expedited trials will be safe and ethical. 
The move was seen by critics as a way for the Indian Prime Minister to make a dramatic announcement in his Independence Day speech on August 15th, rallying on a cry that India can be self-reliant. But after pressure from medical community, the government body clarified that no compromises would be made on safety and that the deadline was simply to expedite the trials and cut through red tape. In reality, though, researchers say that it could take close to a year for the first two phases of the Indian vaccine trials to be completed. Well, so far, there's been no vaccine which has gone through such a rapid development cycle. You know, the earliest any vaccine is taken is at least a few years. I haven't heard of any vaccine candidate in any country uh, which promises a two-month uh, R&D cycle and being ready for public use um, in two months. But with close to a fifth of the world's population, India is seen as crucial to test the efficacy of any COVID vaccine. The rapidly rising burden of the disease and the intent to be self-reliant raises the stakes even further. And for more, I'm joined by Dr. Siegfried Trom, Manager of Research Development and Innovation of the VFA. That's the German Association of Research-Based Pharmaceutical Companies. Good to have you with us. Uh, so we've just seen India is rushing to get a vaccine, but Russia has actually just announced that it's approved the world's first COVID-19 vaccine. It'll start inoculating the country's teachers and medical staff. What do you make of that? Is that the big breakthrough we've been waiting for? I don't think that's a big breakthrough because it's a matter of uh, how high you are setting the requirements for such a registration. In the EU, for example, you would not get at this point of development of the Russian vaccine uh, <clears throat> marketing authorization here for the EU. Certainly what's not. What's missing? What's, what's missing? As far as we know, there is up to now no data from a phase three trial, and this is a requirement, an absolute requirement here for making market approval in, in the EU. What is so important about the phase three trial? Phase three trials <clears throat> are necessary to assess the, both the efficacy and the safety of a medicine. This is a big trial with many thousands of uh, participants of different age, for example, with different comorbidities. There should be people in who had already had a COVID infection and of course those who had not. And you need many thousands of people to show that your vaccine is really safe and efficient. And that's why it normally takes uh, eight to ten years to develop a, a new vaccine, as we've heard in, in the other report. Uh, but now with COVID-19, we certainly see that uh, researchers across the world in China and India and even companies here in Europe, that they say that they might have a vaccine by the end of this year. So that's very fast. How is that possible? Yes, it's very fast, but uh, there are several reasons why this development could be so fast. First one is we have a good experience with the predecessor of SARS-CoV-2, that is with SARS-CoV-1. At that time, there had been some vaccines in development and some of these vaccines have gone through to phase two trials. So there are much, there's much, much experience for getting a vaccine for SARS-CoV-2. The other reason is uh, meanwhile new platform technologies, which are much faster than the old fashioned development techniques. And the last thing is that both in the companies and within the regulatory bodies, highest priority have such developments and uh, there's a very good cooperation here between the regulators and industry people to get the development uh, done as fast as possible. So, Dr. Trom, just very briefly, uh, based on uh, the fact that we might get a vaccine sooner than normally, when are you ready to get vaccinated? I am ready to get vaccinated as soon as our regulatory agency in Europe, CCCMA in Amsterdam, has given the green light to such a vaccine. I rely, I trust here in our agencies. We have seen 
is in the past years that they are doing a very good job and they have assured that they will only uh, give approval to vaccines which are really safe and efficacious. Dr. Thom, thank you so much. Well, time now for your questions. And that means it's over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. How can a cytokine storm be stopped if it has started? Cytokines are, are signaling molecules that are released by immune cells and they're involved in inflammation, which is, is part of the body's immune response to the invasion of a pathogen. Uh, but in COVID-19 patients who deteriorate, the checks and balances in the immune system can stop working correctly and, and the immune cells continue to churn out cytokines en masse, even when they're no longer needed. Uh, then this, this huge wave of cytokines begins attacking the body's healthy tissues, as well as infected tissue in this sort of feedback loop called, called a, a cytokine storm, which in, in many cases can be the primary cause of mortality. Um, there are drugs out there for toning down the immune system response that, that could be effective at preventing an impending cytokine storm in a patient, uh, like the corticosteroid uh, dexamethasone. Um, but it's a fairly blunt instrument that affects the immune response as a whole. Um, several much more specific cytokine inhibitors that have been approved for other conditions like, like arthritis um, are currently in testing to see whether they are also effective in coronavirus-induced cytokine storms. Um, there's also a machine that actively filters cytokines out of a patient's blood many times in the course of a day, um, but it's still in, in clinical testing.